many of you know that he would hear your cry and answer you by and by? My, 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 my. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. God is faithful. No matter what anybody says, God is faithful. Any witnesses know he's faithful. I said any witnesses know he's faithful. Mm. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name now. We thank you, Lord God, for this a brand new day loaded with benefits that only you can give. We thank you for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in Christ Jesus. We give you praise and glory, God, for just being who you are. And then, Lord, being your children. We thank you that you meet every need. And all we have to do is surrender and submit to you. And God, you will answer our cry by and by. Thank you, Lord God, for this word today. Thank you for your people today, Lord God. Speak to our hearts as only you can, and we'll be ever so careful to give you all praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, give the Lord a hand of praise, if you will. Amen, amen, amen. I want you to turn your Bibles uh, to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 8. 
Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Now this chapter, of course, is known as the heroes of faith. And certainly those of you who've been studying the word of God know that uh, from beginning to end, it is uh, highlighting and spotlighting the faith of great men and great women of God who simply by faith got God to move in miraculous and wonderful ways. Uh, it teaches us that if we have that same kind of faith, the God that did it for them will do it for us. And so it's important to learn the principles and I, I am so partial to principles because when, 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 when the shouting is over and, and when the celebrating is over and, and when the sound is over, you need some substance to hold on to. You, you need to be able to say, God, you said in your word, if I do this, you will do that. You need something solid like that where you can reference God. God says, put me in remembrance of my word. In other words, it is not like God forgot his word. He wants to make sure you know his word. Because everything we ask of God has its foundation in his word. Hebrews 11 and 8. Let's begin reading now. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, this word is really talking about uh, the beginning of Abraham adventures and journey with God. There are 15 verses from verse 8 to verse 22 uh, that recalls and recounts uh, the experiences uh, in a synopsis of Abraham's journey uh, from the time he began until the time uh, God called him on. And there are many lessons to be learned, uh, many tests, uh, many trials, many tribulations, but many triumphs. And this word is filled with helping us to understand that every day is not going to be a pretty day, a beautiful day, a sunny day. That there are going to be some trouble, some trials, some storms. But God promised that he would bring you out of those if you put your trust in him. So listen at this word again. It says, by what? By faith. Now I want to deal with this because... It's, it's so important to see that three things in this verse I want to bring out for you. I'll just mention them now, and I hope I can get to all of them. But uh, point number one is have faith in God. Have faith in God. Faith, faith in God. Point number two is follow the instructions of God. Follow the instructions of God of God. And point number three is see your future in God. See your future in God. Now why it's important to see your future in God? Because through faith that's the only way you can see it. You can't visibly see your future in God. It has to be by faith. And so Romans 12 and 3 tells us already that God has given every man the measure of faith. You have the faith to believe God or not believe him. And so you're already equipped with a vacuum on the inside of your soul that won't let anything fill it up except God himself. And when you begin to realize that nothing, when you feel that emptiness, that voidness, that nothingness, it's because you put the wrong thing 
in the place of God. And nothing can feel you like God can. All right? So I want you to see something. Now, let's talk about, one, we're talking about have faith in God. Jesus says in Mark 11, have faith in God. Simply, have faith in God. But now let's deal with this faith issue because, first of all, you need to know God is faith. You cannot get to God outside of faith. It is through faith that God brings everything in the spiritual realm down into the natural realm. It is in faith that we receive everything that God has said, is saying, and shall say. Why? Because he's not a man that he should lie. Two, he's the same yesterday today and forever and God's word the Bible says uh, for the word of the Lord is right right the word of the Lord is right and all his works are true God doesn't lie if he said it I said if he said it he can back it up and only those who trust him and know him and put him to the desk, know that that's so. So let's look at it again, have faith in God. The beginning of this chapter starts off what? Verse 1. Stop. Now, faith. Now, faith. Now, it starts off with now. Well, then Romans 10 and 17 says, so then faith cometh how? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that means the moment you hear God's word, it stirs up in your inner man the necessary substance for you to believe God, trust God, and obey God. You see, that's what's important about understanding the measure of faith. It is knowing that you can't put your hand on it. You can't figure it out. It may not make logical sense, but if God said it, there's something on the inside of you that agrees with it. Now, you either make a choice to obey it or a choice to disobey it, but you can't deny it. Something happens on the inside of you, and, and it happens so deep till it shake up stuff on the inside it it stirs up stuff on the inside. You might not want to do what he tells you to do, but you know he told you to do it. You might make excuses about doing it, but you know he told you to do it. Why? Because it reached a part in you that nothing and nobody else could ever reach. And so it says, now, it says to me that faith is produced the moment the word is heard. Now, faith. Faith is not later. Faith is not waiting till you understand it. Faith is not uh, accepted it once it makes sense to you. Faith is not uh, delaying and denying the things of God until God can prove it to you that it is so. Faith is, is, is accepting his word as he said and knowing that he's able to back up what he said. Now listen at this. I want you to see something. Now turn to uh, Genesis chapter 12 because this is Abraham's story who was called Abram before his change to Abraham. But listen, look at what uh, Genesis 12 and 1. When you get it, uh, say amen. All right. Don't just say amen and don't have it because I want you to read. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, here, here is something I want you to see. I'm just pulling out some points that you can ponder to help you understand the principle. All right. You have it. Say amen. All right. Begin reading. Quote, stop. What's the first word? Okay. Now read on. Now the Lord said, who did he talk to? Abram. To Abram. So this message was to Abram. 
And the message he had to Abram was a life-changing message. Listen to what it says again. Go on and read. Now, keep in mind, Abraham is 75 years old. He is a pagan himself, a heathen. He lives in a heathen country amongst heathen family, has nothing but heathen friends. He serves many heathen and paganistic gods. There are multiple gods in the heathen world. There's a God for this, a God for that, a God for the other, and so forth. So, so he's used to multiple gods for multiple things. But this one God speaks to him so clearly, so directly, uh, so intensely that it shakes up the very fiber of his being. You see, and listen at this now. And I need you to see this. And before I even go any further, remember the first word in this 12th chapter is now, right? And he gives him instructions. Leave your country. Leave your family. Leave your father's house. 75 years old. 75 years old. Now listen at this. Go to verse 4. Go to verse 4. Verse 4, when you get there, I want you to read verse 4 now. <laughs> Hold up, read that. Wait, wait. So what happened? Say that one more can. So Abram departed. He, here's what I want you to know. You go back to the first word in the verse, verse, and it says now. So, verse 4. Then Abram departed. Where's the delay? Where's the denial? Where is the trying to make sense out of this? At 75 years old, certainly you think he takes some time and reason this out now. Now, wait a minute, God. I'm 75 years old now. Uh, and you want me to leave my country, leave my family, and leave my father's house? He didn't hesitate. He moved immediately. Now, so then he departed. No discussion about it. No debate about it. Listen, he got up and he went. Now, see, that's my brothers and sisters. Let me tell you something. When you hear God and you don't act on what God wants you to do when he tells you, the devil begins to pick apart the word God has placed in your heart. And every time you delay the steps that you ought to be making because God said it, you knew it was God, and you should be moving, it turns into denial. Listen, faith is not, again, reasoning it out when you know for sure it's the word of God. It's what God said. God has spoken it in your soul. You are so clear. He's confirmed it. So many of us miss God because we have to think about it. We have to try and get approval from others. We've got to try and see where this makes sense at. This has never happened before where well, maybe God wants you to be the first. And so one of us, uh, many times, uh, many of us don't understand that what God wants to do through us, he may not want to do through somebody else. That's your calling. Now the Lord said unto Abram, the Lord says unto you, you can't try and put what God put on you on me. Maybe he didn't tell me what he told you. But you've got to know that he told you. And when you know, number one, you're going to have his word. Listen. Abraham did not have a Bible, a written word to verify this was God. I want you to see how powerful his faith was. He did not have any written instrument. He was a heathen. God imputed his faith 
uh, as righteousness. He counted it as righteousness. Listen, he became righteous because he believed God and obeyed God. And God called that righteous. Now, listen again. He didn't have a written word, no Bible, no reference to go back to and say, oh, I see how this works. He didn't have a witness of the word of God and how God worked and operated. When he speaks, we listen and obey. He didn't have nobody to look at. That's why God told him, leave his country. There wasn't anybody in his country who could be a witness to the works of God. There was nobody in his family that he could go and consult with and say, I believe God is speaking to me. And he's told me to do something that I, I, I've never heard anything like that before. He, 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 he had to leave his friends and his family and his father's house meaning the covering of his father and all of the possessions, and go where God would tell him. Now, here's what's interesting about it. God never tells him where to go. He just tells him to go. Even in today's time with a GPS, when you put in the coordinates to where you want to go, once you program that in, the GPS will tell you, now go to the nearest route, and your route guidance will start. Listen at me well. It doesn't tell you when you program it in, now that it's programmed in and guidance is ready to start, make a right or make a left. It just tell you go to the nearest route to start and the GPS guidance system will start. What am I trying to tell you? That God told him to go. Didn't tell him where to go. Just told him to go. Here's what God knew. If he really was going to follow God, it didn't matter where God told him to go. He just needed to prove to God that he was going. Now, when, 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 when you get to the nearest route, even if you make the wrong turn, well, do I go left or do I go right? You, know, you take an educated guess. Sometimes you don't look at the, the, the screen and see where the arrow may be pointing. So you make a right. Now, here's once you start moving, it'll tell you at the next intersection or in 50 feet, make a U-turn. I just need you to start moving, and I, I tell you what direction you're going, and if you're going in the right direction. Listen, all he did was trust God. He started moving, didn't know where he was going, because God said, I'll tell you, but he never told him at the time he was standing there. And my brothers and sisters, the faith that this man had in God was so great that it impressed God. That's how he becomes the father of faith, because he has recognized that what God has for him, God and only him can give to him. And when he connected with God and heard God's word, he was clear about the fact that God wanted to bless him better than he had been blessed before. Listen at what God tells him. In the sixth through the, I mean, the second through the uh, third verses there, he gives him seven, seven favored promises. Seven. One, he says, I will make of thee a great nation. Now, this man has no children. His wife is barren. His wife is 65, and he's 75. God tells him, I'm going to make of him, him, a great nation, which means everything that's going to be of that nation is coming through his loins. But God was not just speaking of a literal loin. He's talking spiritual loins as well. Because he's talking about his posterity of faith. 
Listen at me well. God is telling him, I will make of thee a great nation. Secondly, God tells him, I'll do what? I will bless you. I will bless you. Who will bless him? Man, when God tells you, I will bless you, can I tell you God knows how to bless you? Anybody really been blessed of God? Anybody know God can bless you and blow your mind? Anybody know when God gets the favor to bless you, can't nobody stop his blessings? I mean, so God tells him, I will bless you. I will bless you. That's the second promise. Now listen, this is favor. Favor. Then he says, uh, you know, I know you're going through a lot of ridicule and folk are talking about you and thank you crazy and everything. He said, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make your name great. Um, see, nobody else has ever done anything like this. Nobody has ever trusted God like this. And God tells him, I will make your name great. Abraham will be synonymous with great faith. He made his name great because he is the father of faith. Everything that has to do with man coming to God has come through this way of Father Abraham, through the faith that he demonstrated in God. So he tells you, I'll make your name great. And then he tells him this, because your name will be great, and because I'll make you a great nation, and because you are already blessed, thou will be a blessing. That, that, that's why I got to tell you, blessed people don't mind blessing. <laughs> let, me, let me say that again. Blessed people don't mind being a blessing. Why? Because it's a commandment of God. If I have blessed you, then I want you to bless others. Thou shalt be, when you can't bless nobody else, it's suspect about your blessings. See, a lot of folk will brag about their blessings, but if you had some blessings, you wouldn't mind sharing them. Mm. So he says, listen, I, 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 thou shalt be a blessing. He said, let me tell you something else. He said, not only shall you be a blessing, but those who bless you, I'm going to bless them. Wow, look at God now. He says, I bless you. I want you to bless others. And when they bless you, I'm going to bless them. You do what I tell you to do. And you bless them. And those who bless you, I will bless them. Why? That's because they are connected to the source of faith. The source of faith. You know, sometimes God tells you to do something and you wonder why he tells you to do it. But when you don't do it, it aggravates your spirit. It's like you missed an opportunity for God to bless you because God wanted to see whether or not you trust him. God wanted to see whether or not you are functioning in the realm of faith when he said do it. Why? Because God wants his people to believe him, to believe him. Faith, listen, is not something you can see. Faith is something that God says that you believe. And when you believe it, you act upon it, obey it. Remember the word says, I want you to go out and come in. Again, Roman, uh, I mean Hebrews 11 and 8, by faith Abraham, when he was called out, that was, he was called out of the land of Haran into the promised land that God had for him. So he was called out to go in. What is that saying to us? That many times God could bless you where you are, but because many times God knows that there are so many distractions and disturbances and distresses that are around you that would keep you from enjoying the blessed he pulls you from out of Egypt. Mm, somebody ain't hearing me here. And he brings you into 
the promised land because he wants you to be in a land that flows with milk and honey. He wants everywhere you look to see blessings and people blessed and things are blessed, etc., etc. So he puts you in a blessed place. And so he wanted him to go into a blessed place. Blessed place. And so I need you to see this. He, he obeys God. He says, again, go out into a place which he should after, after receive for an inheritance. Now God says, I'm going to bless you, but I'm going to do it after you obey me. See, a whole lot of us want God to bless us before we obey God. And God has said, I'm waiting to bless you, but I'm also waiting for you to be obedient. See, your blessing is waiting on your obedience. If you don't obey God, the blessings are held up waiting on you to get right. And when you get right, the blessings are going to come down. God's already got them reserved for you. Your name is on them. But you have not lined up with his word. You have not given yourself over to the obedience of the instructions of God. You've got to follow, point to his instructions. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but how? You've got to follow the instructions of God. If you don't follow those instructions, you will never get what God has for you. After, somebody say after, receive for an inheritance. Your blessings many times are being hung up by you. We know Satan will try to hang them up as he did Daniel when he prayed and the devil hung up his blessings for 21 days but God had to send some help to break through in this earth realm and get the blessings to Daniel I heard you when you prayed but the devil was holding up your blessing but all you got to do is be faithful help is on the way and he sent Micah to come on through there and break open uh, this realm and cause the blessing to come forth. Listen, God gives you what he promises you after you are faithful and obedient to him. Not before. Well, Lord, why haven't you sent me this? Why haven't you done what I told you to do? You, 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 you've got to realize God is not going to do for you what he's asked you to do for him that you won't do. And then, thirdly, you've got to see your future in God like Abraham did. He saw his future in God because the Bible says he obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whether, not knowing which way to go, he went out. That's the important thing. He left where he was and went to where God told him to go, which was out. Didn't give him a destination. Just told him, leave, go, get out from among your country, your family, your father's house. Just go, go. And listen at this. The further he got away from his country and his family, and his father's house, the clearer he heard God speak. Somebody's not hearing me today. You know, sometimes there's too much noise and too much stuff going on where you can't hear clearly what God is trying to say. But sometimes when you get in that secret place, sometimes when you get into your own closet, Sometime when you get in a place where you can focus wholly on God, God then tunes in clearer to you. And it ain't God not having the issue with talking. It's you having the issue with listening. 
And when you hear God more clearly, it resonates in your spirit man so strongly that it moves you to action. You can't truly hear God, obey God, and do nothing about it. If you hear God and obey God, it means it's an active reality that ensues next. You got to do something about it. Got to do something about it. What has God told you to do that you're still sitting on it right now? God made you some promises years ago, but you still haven't done what God told you to do. You're not obeying God. You're not following his instructions. And therefore, you don't really see your future in God. Because when you see your future in God, here's what you know. That through Christ Jesus, whom God sent to die on the cross for your sins and my sins, our mistakes, our mess-ups, all of the things that we fell short in, for Jesus to make it up for us, to stand in the gap, to make us right with God. He did that so we could see our future in God. God, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That everlasting life is in God. No other place, no other person, no other potentate. Only in God through Christ Jesus. And when Jesus died and paid the price to release us from all of the penalties of our sins, to forgive us and put us in a right standing with God, we were able to see at that point our future in God. Listen, I'm not just talking about here on earth. I'm talking about your future in eternity. That, that, that's why, if you ever notice how the older saints, as they grow older and go, with God up the road and get closer to him, how they change their view from the stuff of the world to the stuff of heaven, of glory. They start looking forward to spending eternity with God. They start talking about, I just want to be somewhere around the throne. They, 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 they start talking about when all God's children get together. They start talking about the things of their soul that, that's going to live forever. And listen, they know God is so faithful that whatever they're going through down here, when they get up there, it'll be over. No more crying. No more sickness. No more death. Uh, Y'all not hearing me here. They, they start looking at their future in God, and they see a place that God has prepared for his people, the holy city of Jerusalem coming down. Listen, John say, I saw it. A new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth were passed away. And he saw the new Jerusalem. That's the place where only the pure in heart shall see God. And my brothers and sisters, if you're not living to see God, you need to check yourself. Do you know, it, it, listen, tomorrow is not promised to you, but eternal life through Jesus Christ is. And to know you will live forever, no matter what happens here, listen, it doesn't compare with what God has for you there. And you don't have to wait till you get there to be, begin enjoying the joy of knowing that there is on the inside of you now. And it all comes through this medium of faith. Have faith in God. Follow in the instructions of God. And see yourself in the future of God.
God is, that's why the songwriter said, he lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. All my fear is gone. I know, I know he holds tomorrow, and I know he holds my hand. That's the kind of future you want in God. That's the kind of future you want in God. Can anybody tell me, I don't care what you've got planned for your next birthday, for the next anniversary, for the next holiday, can you tell me you're sure you're going to be here? As a matter of fact, can you really tell me you're going to make it home safely? I've seen many things happen, and the next moment is not promised to us. But by faith, we see our future in God. And whatever God desires, it is well with our soul. Give the Lord a hand of praise. The doors of the church are open. Whoever you are, my brothers and sisters, now faith. When God speaks to your heart and tells you to do something, listen. The clearer when you obey him, the clearer his voice will become every time you're obedient to God. Some of you have been asking God for this and asking him for that and asking him to lead you and to direct you and to show you and to on and on and on. And God is saying, when I show you, when I tell you, will you obey me? Because you can't get what God has for you until you're ready to do what God tells you to do. And it's not going to always be easy. It's not going to be convenient. It may not be anything anybody else agrees with. And that's why he, he took away all of those hindrances from Abraham by telling him, to leave it was his choice if he didn't leave God wouldn't do anymore but when he left he didn't have anything in anybody to hold him back he trusted God and some of you here today The decision you make today is going to determine whether or not you go forward in the blessings of God. It pays to serve the Lord. I said it pays to serve the Lord. And what God has for you is not going to happen until you start obeying him. We want God to do this and do this and do this and do that and do all of these things. But what does God want us to do? Are we representing him right? Are we living for him? Are we honoring him? The doors are open. The choice for you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. If he's speaking to your heart today, no matter what's going on underneath your skin, if you'll get up and say, Lord, I come. I trust you. I believe in you. I obey you. He, he, he will do it for you. But you've got to obey him. Because he lives. Oh, my, 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 face tomorrow, tomorrow.
For because he lives, all because he lives, all fear is gone. I know, I know, I know, I know, oh, he holds my future, yes he does, life is worth the living just. All because he lives. One more time, if God is speaking to you, get on up and come on. He's calling you. He calls me. Mm -hmm. I can face all of my tomorrows, all of my tomorrows. Mm. My future is in God. Yeah, Lord. Oh. I know. I know. I know. My life is worth Well, give God a hand to praise if you will, if you know it.